Regarding one question which ponders, some non-Muslims allege that the Quran which we Muslims possess today was compiled under the authority of the third caliph, Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So they say, how do you prove that it is the word of God? Could you please express your views on that? The brother has posed a very important question, and I do agree with him. Muslims do allege that the Holy Quran you have today has been compiled and authorized by the third Khalifa, Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, and all the remaining copies he burned. So, but naturally, there are many types of Quran, and only one has been authorized and compiled by Hazrat Usman. Therefore, may Allah be pleased with him. Therefore, there are many versions, and the one that you have may not be the word of God, etc., etc. Regarding how to prove it's the word of God, you can refer to my video cassette, Is the Quran the word of God? That this Quran, logically you can prove it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regarding why did he burn, did he compile, etc., it's completely wrong to say that Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, he is the person who compiled the Quran and authorized it. In fact, the Quran was compiled in the presence of the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Whenever any verse of the Holy Quran was revealed to a beloved Prophet, he immediately memorized it and then proclaimed it to his Sahabas. Their Sahabas memorized it and immediately the Prophet asked the Sahabas to write it down. And whenever it was written down, the Prophet checked it. We know very well the Prophet was Ummi. He could not read or write, but he had a method of checking. For example, the first two verses to be revealed of Surah Ikra, Surah Alaq, chapter 96, verse 1 and 2, is Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al insa min alaq. He recited that, dictated it to the Sahabas, they wrote it down. After they wrote it down, the Prophet said, read it now. So they read, Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al insa min alaq. Okay, correct. If there was a mistake, he used to correct it. So whatever was revealed, he used to tell the Sahabas, he used to memorize it, Sahaba used to memorize it, he used to check the memory of the Sahabas, whether they memorized it correctly or not. Then, after that, when they wrote it, he used to check whether the written material is right or wrong. And, whenever any revelation came, he even told the scribes that this verse of the Holy Quran will come after so and so surah, so and so verse. All this was divine. Because the way the Quran was revealed, we don't have surah ikra, verse 1 and 2 in the beginning of the Quran. It is the 96th chapter. So whenever it was revealed, afterwards it was told by a beloved prophet to the scribes that this verse will come after this surah. And this that we have today, the order, is the same order as Allah Mahfuz present in the heaven. Now you should realize one thing, that every Ramadan, Archangel Gabriel, he rehearsed, and the prophet rehearsed whatever was revealed till that time with Archangel Gabriel. And the last Ramadan before the Prophet died, this Quran was rehearsed twice, in order. So even the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the order is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, whatever was written down, some of the ayahs of the Quran were written down on camel saddles, some on tanned leather, some on scrap leather, some on flat pieces of thin stones, some on leafless palm leaves, some on shoulder blades, different material. After the Prophet expired, at the time of the first Khalifa, Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, after a couple of years, in the Battle of Yamama, there were several Huffaz, those who know the Quran by memory, by heart, they were killed in the battle. So that was a thing which troubled Hazrat Abu Bakr and even Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with them both. So then, Hazrat Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, he called all the scribes who wrote when the Prophet used to recite to them and he appointed Hazrat Zaid bin Thabit who was the best of the scribes, who had the best memory. He said, now what you do, you collect all the material and put it in one material. The Quran was compiled, the order was present but it was not present in one material, in different materials, stones, shoulder blade, leather, etc. So what under the supervision of Hazrat Zaid bin Thabit May Allah be pleased with him. Along with the other Sahabas, all this material was copied in one material, in order. So present, in stitched in a sort of a book form, was done by Hazrat Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him. But the order and everything was already present in same sheet. It was done by Hazrat Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him. This copy was later given to Hazrat Omar. May Allah be pleased with him when he became the second Khalifa. And after he expired, he gave it to his daughter. 
Hazrat Hafsa, may Allah be pleased with her, who was also the wife of the beloved Prophet. Now, during the reign of Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, there were certain disagreements between the Muslims who stayed far away since Islam kept on spreading. Islam spread, there was some disagreement regarding the dialect, regarding the pronunciation of the Quran, in which there were arguments between the Muslims. So, to prevent the argument, Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that we have to see to it that the correct copy reaches the various parts of the Muslim world. So what he did, he called again those scribes and took the copy from Hazrat Hafsa, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of the beloved Prophet and the daughter of Hazrat Omar, may Allah be pleased with him. And he asked the scribes under again a committee to copy it again. And after copying, he asked the Muslim world that whatever copy that you have with you, you burn it. Why? There was a reason. Because every time the Prophet proclaimed a certain verse of the Holy Quran, many Sahabas wrote it down. But it's not possible that all the Sahabas knew each and every verse. Some may not be present when the Prophet said. So if someone has, instead of more than 6,000 verses, he may have 5,000 verses. He may think that these 5,000 verses are complete Quran. So to prevent that, and whatever they wrote down, the Prophet didn't check it personally. Prophet didn't go to every Sahaba's house and, oh, what do you write, show it to me. No. When they recited, people wrote down. It was not checked by the Prophet personally. Since it was not checked by the Prophet, there were chances that these copies which people have with them may carry mistakes. So for that reason, Hazrat Usman said, burn the other copies. Not because to say that there were many versions of the Quran. There was only one authorized, compiled copy of the Holy Quran during the time of the Prophet. The same copy to make it more easily accessible to the world. He had it sent to various parts of the Muslim Ummah. Various parts. Later on, after that, the Arabs could read. There were no Fatta Dhamma Kasara. No diacritical marks were there on the Quran. Because the Arabs can read without the vowels. Without the diacritical marks. Later on, the fifth Yamat Khalifa, under the reign of Abdul Malik Marwan, from 66 to 86, Hijri. Under him, there was a governor in Iraq, Yusuf bin Ajaj. He gave the diacritical marks, Fatta Dhamma Kasra, which we call as Zabar Zirpesh in India. So that the people could pronounce the Quran, those who are non Arabs, who do not know Arabic as a language, they could pronounce it easier. So even what we have today, Fatta Dhamma Kasra, the copy which was originally dictated, copied from the original source by Hazrat Zaid bin Thabit and then given to various parts of the world. One such copy is yet present in the Koptaki Museum in Turkey. It's present there. It's present there. If you check up, it's the same. But it will be without the diacritical marks. But just because the diacritical marks are different, that does not mean Quran is different. Because Quran is a recitation. If any Arab who knows how to recite the Quran without the Fatta Dhamma Kasara, if he recites that Quran and if you recite this Quran, it's 100% the same. There will be no difference. So Alhamdulillah, the Quran that we have was under the personal supervision of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was compiled and what we have today was actually compiled by the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was made accessible to us by Hazrat Usman. And whatever Allah says in the Quran has come true, He clearly says in Surah Al-Hijr chapter 15 verse number 9 that we have revealed the Holy Quran and we will guard it from corruption. Hope that answers the question.